Here's the meat for dinner. That was a fast trip. Oh, thanks for getting it for me, Mr. B. Oh, it was nothing at all. Oh, yes, it was. You're a busy man, and I appreciate it. Well, you're very welcome, Hazel. Boy, that Schwartz certainly takes advantage of ignorance. Ain't them the worst looking lamb chops you ever saw? <laughs> But like I said, I'm already on a bowling team. Well, we're a sponsor, too. Didn't you ever notice that chartreuse bowling shirt of mine? Well, right across the back, it says Stutz Brewery. <laughs> no, Tom. Well, why don't you use my nephew? No. No, I... No, I don't want to change teams. No. Bye. He'll be coming round the mountain when he comes. He'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. He'll be coming back to residence. No, not even if you give me a new bowling ball. I told you and told you to use my nephew. Now, goodbye. Will you stop bothering me? I got work to do. I beg your pardon. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I thought it was Tom. Who is this? This is Mrs. Thompson, Mr. Baxter's sister. Is he there? Oh, Mrs. Thompson from Boston? Hi, are you, Miss Thompson? I'm fine. Is he there? Oh, no, he's out getting a haircut. <laughs> oh, you should have seen him at breakfast this morning. His hair was growing clear down over his ears. So I said, what'd you say, Miss Thompson? I said, is Mrs. Baxter there? Oh, sure, she's here. So I said to him, Mr. B, if you don't get a haircut, you're going to have to put your hair up at night. <laughs> Hazel, I'm calling from Boston. Oh, that's long distance. Missy, telephone, long distance. You should have said something right away. I thought you was here in town. Hurry, Missy. No, no, I... No, I don't want to change teams. No. Button with me, even though we haven't seen each other for nearly six years. <laughs> I quite agree. How are you, Miss Thompson? The last time I saw you, you were wearing your fur coat and you looked just terrific. What kind of fur is your mink coat? <laughs> Real mink? Well, for Pete's sake. Oh, here, Miss B. Deirdre, how are you? Until I started talking to Hazel, I was fine. <laughs> Why you and George persist in keeping that woman, I'll never understand. She is the most... Uh, oh, well, let's not waste time talking about her. Dorothy, I've got the most exciting news. Here? Oh, that's wonderful. George would be so happy. Tell her her three minutes must be almost up. <laughs> but here's the problem. Nancy and I are coming on ahead to look for a place to live. Uh, could you put us up for a few days? Of course, we'd be delighted. Uh, when are you arriving? Huh? What plane? Well, one of us will be there to meet you. Oh, uh, Deirdre and I will have a million things to talk about. But I won't be able to meet her. I have an appointment with a client. Do you think you could? Well, I couldn't possibly. I have to give the treasure support at the parent-teacher's meeting. Well, we'll have to send Hazel. Oh, hi, Mr. B. Got your ears lowered, huh? Yes, Hazel. Just think. Little Nancy must be about 17 years old by... <laughs> Hazel, what are you doing? I was just looking at the back of your head. You know, he has that kind of knob back there. Knob? <laughs> I have not. Of course you haven't, darling. She means that little bump. Dorothy. I just wanted to see if the barber cut his hair so it don't show. No, it shows. Hazel, you are employed as a maid. Not a critic of my haircuts. Please remember that. A maid. Yes, sir. A maid. And on Monday morning, I want you to go to the airport and pick up Mrs. Thompson and her daughter. Yes, sir. I see what you mean. A maid and a chauffeur. Yes, and a comedian. I'll be in I have some work to do. 